Welcome to In Layman's Terms. In today's video, we're diving into the mystery device known as the Zoe Box. For those unfamiliar, the Zoe Box is a 4K HDMI video encoder primarily aimed at video production, live streaming, and gamers. However, in my case, I'm using it as an HDMI extender. Here's how it works. You connect your source HDMI signal into the Zoe box and it allows you to network stream that HDMI signal to any smart device that supports the real-time streaming protocol or RTSP. There are some really cool applications for this device and I'm sure you'll come up with your own innovative uses after watching this video. You see, in Australia, we have a pay TV service called Foxtel, which I use simply because it offers the best picture quality available. Now, some might argue that Foxtel is overpriced, and I would certainly agree. My main frustration was that if I wanted to watch pay TV in another room, Foxtel would be prohibitively expensive. Not only does Foxtel have a high monthly subscription fee, to enjoy it in another room, Foxtel offers something called multi-room access. For this, they charge a one-time $35 connection fee, a $150 to $200 equipment fee, and $25 per month per additional room for the privilege. That's where I decided to find a better solution. I have my pay TV connected to an eight-way 4K HDMI splitter. For my flagship TVs, I wanted the best quality possible. So I used long run fiber optic HDMI cables, which is essentially the same as connecting them directly to the set top box. For my other wireless only TVs, I'm using the Zoe box to broadcast the HDMI signal over my network. Now the Zoe box can only broadcast in 1080p resolution, which is fine for smaller bedroom TVs and wireless devices. So after booting up the Zoe box, log in using the default username and password. You'll be greeted with a live screen displaying the source HDMI video signal. To set up the device for HDMI extension, let's go ahead and change a few settings. In the device settings, click on video on the left hand side. Under input, you will see the source signal information. In encoder settings, change the profile to high profile and disable the HDMI loop out under output settings as we are not using it. For audio settings, change the source from line in to HDMI and set the quality to at least 192 kilobits per second. Once you have saved these settings, you're good to go. Click on streaming, then local, and you'll see your main slash AV URL. This RTSP URL can be used with various applications. I'll be using VLC as it's versatile, multi-platform, and easy to use. If you have a smart TV that supports VLC, simply launch VLC and select network stream. In there, enter the RTSP URL from the Zowie box, and that's it. Simple. The Zoe box can handle multiple streams simultaneously, so you can watch the video feed on many devices at the same time. Just remember, you can't watch different channels on different TVs. The Foxtel channel will be the same for all devices viewing the stream. Now, my Foxtel remote is connected via Bluetooth, which has a reasonably good range, allowing me to change channels from different locations. However, you'll need to take that same remote with you from room to room. For that, I have a much better solution. The Broadlink RM4 Pro. The Broadlink RM4 Pro is a Wi-Fi enabled smart remote control and IR blaster. It allows you to send infrared remote control commands to a device using a smartphone app. Now, if you've been following my videos, you know I have a man cave slash guest house and now a large shed on my property, all with big screen TVs. I often like to watch sports from these different locations. The Broadlink RM4 Pro enables me to power on the set top box and change channels using my smartphone. It can control almost any device that uses IR 
and there's a huge repository of community submitted devices. So you may not need to even program your device's IR signals. In my case, the Foxtel IQ4 IR programming was ready and available within the app. I simply selected the desired remote control and it was good to go. The app also supports voice assistants like Alexa, Google, and Siri. I was able to create an Apple voice shortcut command that would allow me to say, Siri, turn on Foxtel using my home pods or Siri, press back on Foxtel, allowing me to toggle between the two most recently viewed channels. If you intend to use the Zoe box like I did, it's important to know that there are different hardware revisions that could affect your use case. The device is advertised as compatible with a 4K 60Hz HDMI source signal and streaming it at 1080p 60Hz. However, this isn't entirely correct, depending on the hardware revision. My initial Zoe box, hardware revision 3.1.4, could accept a 4K 60 source signal, but it would freeze and crash after about 60 seconds, so I had to exchange it for a new device. The replacement device, Hardware Revision 3.1.3, .3, only supports a maximum source input of 4K 30Hz. Since Foxtel supports 50Hz at various resolutions, I had no option but to lower the Foxtel resolution to 1080p in order to use the Zoe box, which isn't ideal. In order to go back to 4K and resolve this, I need to purchase another Zoe box and hope for a hardware revision of 3.1.4 or above. I spent days troubleshooting and then contacting support before learning about the hardware revisions, which is not advertised when you purchase the device. Now the Zoe box is a great piece of hardware with lots of quirky uses but it does fall short due to software bugs and the various hardware revisions. If you can get a hardware revision 3.1.4 box and Zoe Tech updates the firmware to resolve the crashing issues, it could be a really fantastic device. In conclusion, if you're looking for a unique way to extend a video source without running cables and want the freedom to view it on any smart device, wired or wireless, the Zoe box could work for you. I hope you have enjoyed this video. I enjoyed making it. Thank you for your support. I really appreciate it. And as always, until next time.